Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we will show you how to assign properties to structural geometry in RAM Elements Connect Edition. In this video, we are going to be focusing on showing you how to use the databases that are installed with RAM Elements and how to modify them per your own company standards. RAM Elements utilizes a series of databases to assign properties to the model. The program comes with many typical databases defined, but you may want to add new information to the database or edit the existing information using the database tools, which are located in the Home tab of the ribbon. You can see that we have databases to customize the section properties, the materials, the connections, bolts, and welds. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the sections database. So up in the Home tab of the ribbon, I'm now going to select the sections icon. Now this corresponds with the information that we see at the bottom of the data panel when the members tab in the sections icon are active. We're basically seeing the sections database. Now each database is organized by group, table, and item. The group indicates the region for which the database is applicable, such as the United States or Europe. The table indicates the type of section or material, connection or bolt or weld contained in the group. And then the item would indicate the properties for each type of item that's located within that table. Now the databases installed with random elements cannot be modified, but new groups, tables and items can however be created. Before we go ahead and create our own groups, let's go ahead and just take a quick look at this database. So here, for example, I wanna select a W section and I used a W8 by 15 in my particular model. So I can go ahead and double click on that and I can see all of the section properties that were created for this particular section. So this is all standard stuff that's available within that database. Let's go ahead and close out of that. So now that we know how to review the databases that are installed with the program, let's go ahead and take a look at how to customize the database or basically create new sections. Now there may be times where you need to customize the databases. Perhaps you're looking at an older historical structure that has older sections that are not quite used today, but you still need to be able to analyze that structure. Or maybe for whatever reason, you have a custom shape that you need to create to incorporate in your model. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is you're gonna to need to create a new group. Again, we can't customize the United States group, but we can create our own group. So within this sections dialog, and each of these databases are set up this way, I'm gonna go ahead and say add new group. And let's go ahead and we'll just call this one training video. Then we'll go ahead and click okay. So now I've created my own group. Now within this group, I need to create whatever tables I need and whatever items I'm going to need for this. So let's go ahead and start by creating a new table. So the next item down, we're gonna go ahead and say new table. And then I can name this table uh, anything I want. So let's go ahead and we'll just call it a roof section. And then for the type, we're gonna go ahead and click on this browse button. And these will be all the different types of uh, sections that you could create uh, tables for. So for this one, I'm gonna select an AISI clip, for example. So I'm gonna highlight that section, and then we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And then we'll click OK again. So this is table is basically letting me know the types of items that are gonna be available within it. Once we have a table, we are now ready to create an item. To do that, we're gonna to go to the sections dialog again, and now we're gonna select the new item. Here we can go ahead and enter the name of our section. We're just gonna call ours roof eight by four by one, for example. And then we need to enter the section properties. Now, again, the table identified what type of section this is. So the parameters you're gonna see for the different tables might be different depending upon what type of table you applied. 
So we'll go ahead and enter it. Now, what's very convenient about this dialog is you're going to notice that once I select in a different field, the help window will be appearing to show me what these variables are indicating. So I'm going to go ahead and populate it with the information that I have for the type of section I'm going to use. And again, if I want to click on these fields to get more information, I get a nice help window over here that can let me know. Once we are done specifying all of this information, we'll go ahead and click OK. And then you can see that our item has been added. Now you can add as many tables as you need and as many items as you need to complete the current job. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click close. And then what we're going to notice is that now our training video group is available and those sections are available. So now those can be assigned to particular sections in the model. Now there's a couple things that you want to be aware of if you are making customized databases uh, for your machine. The first is by default, the databases are located on your local hard drive and are not integral with this particular model. Now, if customizations are made to a database and used in a model, anyone else opening this model on a different machine will not have the correct information to perform an analysis. Now, to avoid a database error, you may want to zip up your model. To save your model as a zip file instead, we're going to go to our File tab in our ribbon, and then we'll go to our Save As option. We can browse for a different location in your model. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to save as a zip file instead of just a standard ETZ RAM elements file. Now, when you save the model as a zipped, uh, the databases will be included. So you can go ahead and send that zip file to somebody else if they're also going to be working on it. In addition to that, your other option is to store your databases on a network. So by default, your databases will be stored on your direct hard drive. But what you can do is you can copy the RAM elements databases to a common network location if several different engineers in your office will be working through the same databases and on the same models. To do that, we need to check out our general configuration. To find your general configuration, again, we're going to select your file tab in your ribbon, and we're going to go to the options area, and we're going to select general configuration. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the user folders area. Now, what we're going to see here in the databases section, this, these are the databases that are installed with the program when you install it on your personal computer. So you can copy these databases onto a network, and then you're going to want to remap this database folder to that network location. This will basically allow all the engineers in your office that are running off the same network to use the same databases. Now, in addition to the sections properties, you can also modify your material properties. And again, it's set up the same exact way using groups, tables, and items. This concludes the process for reviewing our databases that are installed with RAM elements. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.